I got a great perk story. A great perk story. What was the year, perk? What was the year we were in Rhode Island for training camp? It was was that the the year after the championship or in 2010? Because I I know one thing. So the start of the season, Perk was hurt, and Patrick O'Brien, the the high draft pick, was he was on the roster. He was he was at, at, at in the pre the the pregame pickup, and then we started practice, and Perk was still like rehabbing from something. And Patrick O'Brien had a good game because, you know, no one knew who he was and Rondo was throwing him lobs. And Rondo went over and went to – I don't know if he said it to you or if he just said it. Now, I'll remind you, Perk's been a starting center. And I'm going to just tell you the makeup and the fabric of Perk. Perk's a starting center on a championship team. Like, that starting lineup never lost a series, ever, without being hurt. <clears throat> and uh, Rondo said – Hey, man, Perk better watch out because this Patrick O'Brien, he's coming to take your minutes, right? right. And Perk, and Perk he, he, he heard it, and he went back to doing his rehab, and Patrick O'Brien was living on top of the world. Like, they, everyone was, like, talking about Patrick O'Brien. He's different. He's he going to do this, and he's going to do that. Perk returned, and from that moment on, Patrick O'Brien continues to hit the down world slide all the way to out of the league. And he never knew what happened. And basically, Perk took everything that he already built up, as well as his confidence for anywhere in the future. And it wasn't just him. It was Perk. It was Big Baby. And I don't think Leon Poe was there. But those guys destroyed him. Now, Patrick was talented. Talented. But the fabric wasn't there. And everyone kind of knew it after Perk returned. And my point is, even though, like, most people would be like, hey, we won a championship. I don't have to worry about that. Like, Patrick O'Brien, that shit's beneath me. No, no, Perkins wasn't like that. Perkins was like, all right, y'all keep talking. And he went out there and he proved it. He proved that he earned his spot. Because deep down inside, Perk always felt like he had to prove himself. And I don't think that everyone is built that way. I think there are different types of people who just feel like they've made it and they've accomplished it, and that's cool. And I don't think, no matter what Perk accomplished, he was never thinking like that. He was always thinking like, I got to earn everything I get. True or false, Perk? Hey, Scal, that you actually just pissed me off because I remember that, like, <laughs> word for word. So, you remember it was it was during preseason, man. It was during yeah. preseason, and I was sidelined with some type of injury. I forgot what it was. I don't think it was my – it wasn't my ACL. It was something minor. But oh, anyway, it was fun. like – he was – Patrick O'Brien was real athletic, man. He was, you know, I'm talking about catching lives and, you know, he was showboating. And we used to do like this, uh, you know, at shoot-around, we used to have this five-on-O scrimmage, five-on-O offensive dummy uh, where we used to run up and run our sits. And he was just like, you know, and at the end, we'll just run back on defense and they was bouncing it up, throwing the lives. And I remember Pete, he was sucking them off like, oh, oh. He athletic. He like, oh, so so Rudy. So I remember it was the last preseason game. So then I was coming back. So I think we had like what, like two a week or two before the first regular season game, right, Scal? So I come in and I just remember the first day I just punked him. I just took his heart, like snatched his heart, <laughs> and and it was just from now on when I just noticed he was just a punk. So I knew it. He was a coward. And I and I stood on it, and ever since then I smelled blood, and I was just talking, sh- talking bad shit to KG, Ray, all of them because they was all just sucking him off like it was fool's gold in preseason, and I did not <laughs> like it. But listen, ask Cal. I had to. He's go still mad. This. He's still mad. He's still mad. Like yep. so, nah, so, so, Rudy. I had to when I talk about the board, fabric, man. when I talk about a fabric of a human being, and what I'm been around, and what I'm used to, this is. This is 11 years later. Perk is still upset that his boy, Rondo, his boy, KG, mm-hmm. and Paul Pierce, after all the things they've been through, they took his side. But you know what? That's how that was. It was that environment. And Patrick O'Brien, Danny had to trade him because as soon as I saw Perk destroy him, everybody turned on Patrick O'Brien. Yeah. They started calling him tissue paper. Everybody turned on Patrick <laughs> yeah. O'Brien. All because yeah. of... The five days before the season starts, when they were gassing him up, gassing him up. Ooh, ooh, look at that windmill. Ooh, Perk can't do that. 
I, it, he took his heart, and it was never the same for him. And that, when I talk about the fabric of a guy, that's what I'm talking about. 